2019 for me was a year of studying triplets. I had found a handful of patterns and ideas that I just kept returning to work on in the triplet world, and some of those ideas even made it into YouTube videos. this one particular triplet concept that I was practicing that I never really finished. I put a good amount of time into practicing this one concept, but I'd be lying if I said that I had finished working on it or mastered it. It's not really a thing anyway. And so like a lot of hard shit, I would practice this for a little while and then get frustrated, kind of abandon the concept and then come back to it later uh, and then realize that I still suck at it. Of course I do, I didn't practice it. And despite all of my lazy struggling with this one triplet concept, out of nowhere during a open practice session, I came up with this. Now that feel came out entirely on accident the first time that I played it. And it's really cool when that happens, but I wanted to know what exactly was going on. So when I dissected this fill, I realized that it was directly based on that triplet concept that I had not yet finished learning. It was like this idea or this concept that I had not finished practicing somehow gave birth to this brand new drum fill. And that doesn't mean that I didn't have to practice this. I did have to practice it a lot just to make this lesson. Uh, but in an effort to understand exactly how this new fill was gifted to me by the universe and what makes it so difficult, we're gonna have to talk this one out. I'm like 90% sure there's a drum lesson in here, so stick around, we'll figure it out together. So to kick this off, we're gonna get beat one out of the way because compared to the rest of the measure, these first six notes are very easy. So the first six notes of the fill, we're playing a pattern of right, left, right, left, left, kick. We got a right hand on the floor tom, left, right, up on a closed hi-hat, two ghost notes on the snare drum with the left hand, and then a kick drum. So let's just get down this six note chunk at a couple speeds in 16th note triplets. All right, so that's how we're opening up, and the trickery begins on the downbeat of two. So in beats two, three, and four, or the rest of the measure, we're only using two patterns here. We have a four note pattern of right, left, left, kick. And we also have a five note pattern of right, left, left, kick, kick. Now in this fill, we're gonna be alternating between these two patterns, starting out with that five note pattern on the downbeat of two. So if we were to look at the skeleton or the template of this fill, we would have six, five, four, five, four. And the math checks out. If we add all those numbers together, we get a total of 24, which is exactly how many notes we need to complete a measure of 16th note triplets. So before we go any further, let's just hear this entire pattern. Let's hear the framework of this thing before we start to mess with it. I'm still gonna orchestrate the floor tom, hi-hat, ghost note thing in beat one, but we're gonna keep everything else on kick and snare for now. And make no mistake, this is the hardest part of this lesson. If you can get this down, everything else that we're gonna cover today is gonna be relatively easy. Let's try this out at 50 and 70 BPM.
So remember that concept I talked about in the beginning of this lesson that I said I couldn't really get down? This is it, kind of. I spent a lot of time last year trying to fit four and five note groupings like this into measures of 16th note triplets. Now again, this isn't something that I have finished practicing and it's not something that I'm very good at even to this day. I think I'm actually so bad at playing four and five note groupings inside of triplets that I wouldn't even feel comfortable trying to teach it to you in this lesson. But if I'm that bad at using four and five note groupings inside of triplets, where did this fill come from? I think I know what happened. In trying to play these four and five note groupings as triplets, my brain made a mathematical connection all on its own. Because if we instead think of these four and five note groupings as nine note groupings, things get way simpler. See, nine note groupings are something that I've studied. I have hours of drum lessons covering how to use nine note groupings inside of triplets. But at no point in time did I ever make the connection that four plus five equals nine. Just never crossed my mind. See, our brains are exceedingly good at finding the path of least resistance. And I think my brain wanted so badly to find something that was comfortable and recognizable that it took these new patterns of fours and fives and it found a way to smash them together so it would more closely resemble an idea that I could actually play and hear nine note groupings. Now this little math game is what makes this measure sound so strange at first. Hearing nine note phrases within triplets is not the hardest thing in the world and there's probably an element of familiarity there for a lot of you guys. But when we ask our brain to split those nine notes into groups of four and five and hear them that way, you might encounter a little bit of resistance. I definitely did. So now that we know all of this, you should be relatively free to at least start practicing this pattern and get the structure or the template of this fill down. And so if you're there, I wanna show you a couple other really cool things that we can do with this particular pattern. If you wanted to learn the orchestration that I played at the beginning of this lesson, all I'm doing is moving the right hands within the four and the five note patterns. I'm moving those to different surfaces. So there are four right hands here. So let's just start out with a normal walk down the kit right on the snare, then up on the rack tom, and then finish down on the floor toms. Check it out. Here's another tricky one. Do that same orchestration with the right hand, snare, rack, floor, floor, but now move all of the left hand ghost notes up to a closed hi-hat. One more. So for this one, I want you to bring the left hands uh, off of the hi-hat back down to the snare as ghost notes. And this time, I want you to alternate those four right hands in beats two, three, and four. I want you to alternate them between a closed hi-hat and a snare drum accent. So we're gonna start out with the hi-hats on the downbeat of two, and then alternate the right hands uh, from the snare to the hi-hat for the rest of the measure. And it gives us this weird semi-modulated groove sort of thing.
Now let's reverse that, starting with the snare accent on the downbeat of two with that right hand, and then alternating to the hi-hat from there. There's a thousand orchestration ideas that you could come up with for this one, and some of them are trickier than others, but at the end of the day, I think a lot of that work falls on your plate. What I've given you in this lesson is just a template at the end of the day, and while you are totally welcome to steal my orchestrations and learn these ideas note for note, it always makes me happier as an educator to see you evolve this concept and turn it into something that is uniquely yours. I think in learning drums, all of us have experienced what it's like to stumble across these you know, seemingly free ideas in our playing, but I also think that it's our job to nurture those ideas, to explore where they came from, to revisit them, and hopefully grow them into larger music musical concepts that we know they can be. So I definitely have a lot of work still to do with this fill, especially if we're gonna expand it to the concept that's behind it. Uh, and it's my goal to eventually be able to share all of that with you and to teach this whole concept of using four and five note groupings inside of 16th note triplets and just see how far we can take this. But until then, I'm just grateful to know that my mind is making some sort of mathematical subconscious connections. And in this specific case, I think it gave me a pretty dope fill. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you haven't already visited my brand new online drum school, this is your formal invitation to do so. OrlandoDrummer.com has been completely redesigned from the ground up, and right now you can get a free seven day trial to explore the entire library of content there. Starting an all access membership gives you instant access to over 650 drum lessons, practice loops, interviews, studio tours, audio and video masterclasses, and a whole lot more. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Adam here, the Orlando Drummer, and I will catch you in the next one. Later.